Well, we're glad that you've joined us today. A special day, right? I mean, the opportunity to, to honor our high school grads um, from our Christian school, from our, from our local high schools, and as well homeschoolers, like a great opportunity to, to recognize each of them. And we got a graduation this afternoon at 2 o'clock, and you're more than welcome to come back and join us for that for our Christian school here and uh, that'll be a special time. And then, as well, this morning, um, we have the opportunity to, um, to send out a couple of missions teams from our church. And so, if, if you're with us, um, maybe for the first time, or maybe you're not usually with us, today's a special day, and we're, we're glad that you've uh, joined us this morning. Um, we've also been in a, in a series called Central Reminders, and it's not just Central Reminders for those who are from Central Baptist Church. It's central reminders because these are central reminders. These are core components, if you will, of the Christian faith. Things that, that those who are followers of Christ should be living out and should be striving to do in their, in their walk with Christ. And so we're walking through this series and, and, and talking about it. And really it all comes from um, what is known for us is, is our purpose statement as a church. And maybe if, if you're new or maybe you even noticed it on the wall this morning as you walked in. But if you've been here a while... You can, you can say it. I can start it, and you can say, state this phrase. And so let's do that, right? Our, our church, right, we exist to make passionate. Man, and you guys are just so pumped about that second service. Like, loving it, loving the energy with that, right? Now let's try it again, right? We exist to make passionate. There we go. All right, all right. So out of that, right, we've been talking about the last couple weeks here, the last few weeks, we've been talking about um, the, the great commandment, and then this morning, the Great Commission. And, and the first reminder that we gave comes from the Great Commandment, and, and it was this. Our first reminder week one was love God, right? Central reminder number one, love God. And it comes from a, a question that Jesus is asked, right? The religi religious leaders come to him, and they uh, co confront him, and and they have one who's a lawyer that is like an expert in the law, and he's like, teacher, what, what, what's the greatest commandment? And this is what he said to them. He said to them, Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven: 37, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. And this is the first and great, or this is the great and first commandment. And, and Jesus answers this, obviously, to perfection, right? He, he nails it. And, and from that point on, they really don't have anything else to say to Jesus. The religious leaders, they've been trying to catch Jesus and trap him. And from here, it's like he's finally stumped them once and for all. And this command really is all about this reality of love God with everything you are and with everything that you have. And it's just as true today as it was when Jesus mentioned it. In fact, Jesus quotes Deuteronomy chapter 6, which was written long before his birth. And it's known as the Shema. We walked through those components of that from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Well, last week, Tanner gave us our second reminder, and it's this, love others. Love others. And it comes as well from that same text, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. Love God, first in, or great and first commandment. Second is like it, verse 39. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. In other words, we can sum up, sum, sum up, summarize, sum up, either one works. The Old Testament by saying love God and love others. I mean, we can take it and we can crunch it all down into that statement. Love God and love others. Now, if you've been a follower of Jesus for any length of time, you've probably heard messages, plural, right, about this. About this, this commandment of loving God and loving others. But the reality is, we need it all the time, don't we? I mean, we need it every day. Uh, just like the other day, I, I was uh, I was up in the in the Buffalo area, and um, I I had uh, the opportunity to make a turn in my car, and and I had the right of way, and this lady who was who's older than me, um, but quite feisty, um, like don't don't sell her short here, right? Um, she cuts right in front of me, like just cut me off, totally cut me off. Totally in the wrong, like it was very clear I had the right, like obvious, and I was just like, whoa, right? And she's like, ah, ah, like that's all I can, see. like like I can't hear, but her mouth is going and her arms are flailing everywhere. 
And I wanted to just roll down my window from last week's message and just say, please won't you be my neighbor? <laughs> right? I mean, I just thought, just take that Mr. Rogers illustration that Tanner used and put it in practice. Actually, no, that probably wouldn't have been loving. That might have been with a little bit of a jab. But um, no, I was just like, wow, man, somebody's really fired up today, right? Um, just because they wanted to go to Wegmans. Really bad, I guess. I don't know what it was. But, you know, the reality is this. Can, can I just challenge you with this? We've all been on both sides of that equation, right? I mean, all of us have probably blown the horn out of irritation at the very least, right, over somebody. And we've all done that person that's like, wow, sorry, whoa, I don't think I was wrong, but okay, right? The reality is this. We all need to remember the importance of loving others. And our love from God flows into our love for others. And we need that reminder each and every day. In fact, as I thought about this, I thought about the old song that says this, they'll know we are Christians by our love. And I want to read you some of the lyrics from this song. It says, we are one in the Spirit, we are one in the Lord, and we pray that all unity will one day be restored. It comes out of our love for God and flows into our love for others. And the chorus says, and they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. Yes, they'll know we are Christians by our love. Right from the words of Jesus. Listen to the next verse. We will walk with each other. We will walk hand in hand. And together we'll spread the news that God is in our land. Why don't we say in our church, right? In our hearts, in our lives. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. The third verse says this, we will work with each other, we will work side by side, and we'll guard each one's dignity and save each one's pride. And they'll know we are Christians by our love. So true, isn't it? People recognize in us the love of Christ, or should recognize in us the love of Christ. In fact, Jesus said before He went to the cross as He met with His disciples on that final night, a new commandment I give to you, love one another. And it's repeated time and time again throughout the New Testament. Well, this morning we're going to look at our third reminder, and it's this. Make disciples. It's the great commandment, right? Love God. The second is like, like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love others. Love God, love others. And then it's this, the great commission. Make disciples. Or another word that we could, you could use for disciples is followers. Make followers. And you say followers of what? Followers of Jesus Christ. As we talk about it, passionate followers of Jesus Christ. Well, this morning we're going to be in Matthew chapter 28. So we've gone from Matthew chapter 22, the great commandment, to the great commission, Matthew chapter 28. And the title is this this morning, Become Followers who make followers. Become followers who make followers. And, and I'm going to kind of just come back to that. So keep that in your mind. Become followers who make followers. Matthew chapter 28 is on page 487 if you're using the Bibles under the chairs around you. Now, as much as I love social media, my wife knows this, completely sarcastic, and those of you who know me well, right? Now, I, I, I am not a huge fan of social media, right? We're not talking about, when we say followers, we're not talking about those kind of followers. I mean, can, can we just recognize social media followers? Uh, it, we could probably boil it down to maybe, maybe if someone's like a big time follower, they, they like check every single post and every story and every whatever the right words are that I might not be using are, um, right? They check everything, they like everything, they love everything, they heart everything, right? It's a little much. Or then there's those followers who are like, Maybe once in a while they're kind of checking in or they hear a catchy phrase and they might repost it. Um, then there's those that just randomly like stumble on things once in a while. For the most part, as much as they'd like to say they're like really serious about being a follower, that's not what we're talking about. When we talk about being a follower of Jesus Christ, we're talking about something way beyond what it means to be a follower on social media. So because that word is often used in that regard, I want you to know we're talking about way more than that. Way greater than that. Way deeper than that when we talk about following Jesus. In fact, we just recently went through our series on Psalm 23, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we talked about what it meant to be close to the shepherd, to make sure that we were on the right path. He'll lead me in paths of righteousness. 
We've got to be close to the shepherd in order to know how to follow him. And so when we talk about being followers, we're talking about being close to our Savior. In fact, listen to this quote. The greatest issue facing the world today with all its heartbreaking needs is whether those who are identified as Christians will become disciples. There's a big difference there, right? We've talked about this before, but there's a lot of people who followed Jesus that were a part of the crowd. And many of them walked away because they couldn't handle the teachings of Jesus. And then there were those who were truly disciples, right? There's a big difference between someone who says, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, and someone who's truly a disciple. Students, apprentices, practitioners of Jesus Christ, those steadily learning from Him how to live the life of the kingdom of the heavens into every corner of human existence, right? Into every corner of our lives. And the truth is when we do that, it points others to the Savior and we really become followers who make followers. Well, we're going to look at this third reminder of make disciples and it comes from Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20. If you're not familiar with this text, I want to just give you just a little bit of background here. These words come after Jesus has already died on the cross. He's died on the cross, was buried in the tomb for three days. He rose again victoriously, right? Three days after having been dead and buried. Three days later is alive and risen. And for 40 days, he has been with with his followers after he rose again. Forty days he spends with his followers. He's seen by numerous witnesses. In fact, at one point, it says in 1 Corinthians 15 that he was with 500 followers at one time. There's no doubt Jesus rose from the dead. And, and he goes from there after spending 40 days with them. He's, he's about to return back to heaven to ascend into heaven. And he's going to kind of give them their last central reminder, if you will. And it comes from this text, Matthew chapter 28. And it says this, Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Like, in other words, like, listen, God's giving me this, uh, this authority, this power, the, the Father's given it to me, and, and, and I have it, and, and now I'm commissioning you, you who are followers, you who are disciples, I'm commissioning you to go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Jesus is, is noting a major shift here. It's like, I've been with you guys. I've, I've been teaching you all of these things. I've, I've made the, the blood sacrifice of payment for sin at the cross. I, I rose again. I've, I've proven my victory over sin and death in the grave. And now I'm commissioning you to go out. I've been given the authority and now I'm commissioning you to go. It's actually a command. It's an imperative. Now here's what I think is really important to understand. Jesus wasn't saying this just for the disciples. It wasn't just for the eleven who remained. It wasn't even just for the core group of followers that was even bigger than just that 11. It wasn't just for the, the few dozen or so that were gathered there listening to him. Listen, it wasn't just for them. It's for here and now as well. And can I really make this clear? It's not just for past, uh, pastors and missionaries. It's for anyone who's truly a follower of Jesus Christ. Jesus has commissioned you, as a follower of Jesus, to go therefore and make disciples, baptizing them and teaching them. That's what you're called to do. Not just me because I have a title of pastor. It's for all of us. And we need to be about this. That's why we talk all the time about, man, we need to make passionate followers of Jesus Christ. We need to become followers who make followers of Jesus Christ. I gotta tell you, I've learned over the years to uh, appreciate grammar more and more. I'm not saying I love it yet, I don't know that I'll ever love it, but I appreciate it more and more, and, I, and I've learned to understand it more and more. And this is one of those passages that when you know the grammar, it, it, it kind of just takes it to another level for you. And, and I wanna just briefly explain it. Stick with me for 60 seconds and you'll have it, okay? 
You, you take this verse, especially verse 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples, right? Go therefore and make disciples. Make disciples, it's the controlling verb phrase of the whole kit and caboodle, if you will, all right? And, and out of that, there's actually three participles that go with that phrase. Go or, or going, baptizing, teaching. That's how we make disciples. In fact, if we were to translate that literally in verse 19, it's as you are going. As you are going, make disciples, baptizing and teaching them. And, and the reality is this. This is why it's given to all of us. As you are going, as you're going through life, as you go to lunch this afternoon, as, as maybe you come back for graduation, maybe you got some things you plan on doing, as you are going, as you go to work tomorrow, as you're with coworkers, as you're with classmates, make disciples. Like, it, it's for each of us to be a part of. It's for each of us to be doing. You know, a lot of people have plans and things that they want to do, right? Whether it's starting a business with your cousin or, or whatever the case, right? We got plans, but listen, it ought to be within our plan each and every day to make disciples. Like, if, if we're really followers of Jesus, this is it. This is what we should be all about in our own families, with our close friends that need Christ, we need to be making disciples. As you are going, baptizing. We, we talk all about baptism in that it's the public declaration of, of somebody declaring that they're a follower of Jesus. And it's a beautiful picture. When someone's here and they get baptized, it's this beautiful picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. As they're baptized, right, it's a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection. Going down under the water and coming back up again, rep representing the, the resurrection of Christ. It's a beautiful picture. And it's a public declaration of them saying, listen, I am a follower of Jesus. And if you're a follower of Jesus and you've never been dunked, you've never been immersed, baptized, man, that's your next step. And we want to encourage you to talk to us about that. We would love to make that happen, see that take place. And trust me when I say, we would all love to celebrate that with you. And then as well, this, this last participle of teaching. As you're going, baptizing, teaching, make disciples. It's, it's what it looks like. You know, as I thought about teaching, there's this reality of, of teaching ourselves, of studying God's Word. It, it ought to be something that's a part of, of our life continually as a follower of Jesus, that we are studying the Word, that we are in it more and more and more, and as well that we are teaching others. Parents teaching their children, right? Teaching those that we love and care about, pointing them to the truths of the Scriptures. That's what we are to be all about. Well, as we talk about our need to become followers who make followers, we're going we're to kind of split this into two, all right? This week, we're going to talk about becoming followers of Jesus. And next week, Tanner's going to handle the second portion of, of this in terms of talking about making followers of Jesus. And we're actually going to pull in a, a few interesting pieces here at the end with this. But as we talk about Becoming followers who make followers, it begins with becoming. It becomes with giving our life to Christ. John, in his gospel account, gospel meaning good news, uh, John, in his gospel account of Jesus, details a brief description, a brief synopsis of what it means to become a follower of Jesus. And he says this in John chapter 1, verse 12. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. It was to those who believe and receive. I, I love the fact that that rhymes in English. Now, don't ask me if that rhymes in Greek. I didn't look that up and check that out, but I'm glad it rhymes in English, right? Those who believe and receive, they believed in Jesus. Now, listen, I, I want to make this clear. There's a lot of people who believe in Jesus, so to speak. I mean, people who are not followers of Jesus who to some degree believe in Jesus. Like, they believe Jesus existed. They, they believe Jesus was a good person. I mean, they look at, at the facts that Jesus, nobody argues, atheists will not argue the reality that Jesus existed. They won't even argue whether or not Jesus won the, was on the cross. And if they're really honest, they won't even argue that there was an empty tomb. 
So a lot of people say, oh yeah, I believe in Jesus, good person, prophet, teacher, whatever we want to say, but do they believe in Him as their Lord and Savior? We use those, those words a lot as followers of Christ. That, that He's our Lord and our Savior. He, he's our Lord in that He's the ruler of our lives. We use that phrase all the time, right? Ask Jesus to be the leader of your life. We could say Lord. And forgiver of your sin, Savior, right? We, we talk about this a lot. But it begs the question as we talk about believing in Jesus as Savior, what does somebody need saving from? And the answer is sin. Right? I mean, sin's not a very popular word. Some might want to say, well, we need, we need saving from our sin. No, listen, we need saving from our sin. I need to be saved from my sin. You need saved from your sin. We, we need to be saved by Jesus because we are all sinners. In fact, Paul writes in Romans 3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. All. Guess what all means? All. All have sinned. I've sinned. You've sinned. We've all sinned. And it's our sin that separates us from God, which is why Jesus died on the cross for us to pay the penalty of our sin. In fact, Romans 5, 8 goes on to say this, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I mean, can I just challenge you for a second? If you're a, a follower of Jesus Christ, don't lose your passion over the death of Christ on your behalf. Don't lose that. Don't let verses like this grow old, right? God showed his love for me, for you, fill in the blank with your name. God showed his love for Ben, and that while I was still a sinner, Christ died for me. Man, that ought to grab us each and every day of our lives. I hope that every time you have the opportunity to take communion, right? That you take communion, that you're just kind of in this place where it's like, man, I'm blown away that God would love me enough to send his son to die for me and pay the penalty of my sin. It's amazing. Amazing. By the way, I know today's the first Sunday of the month. We usually have communion, and some of you are probably freaked out that there's not communion cups out there. Don't worry. Next Sunday, all right? All right, Tanner's got it covered. It's a five-Sunday month. It all works out, okay? So, Romans 5.8, God shows his love for us. And then while we were sinners, Christ died for us. goes on in Romans chapter 6 to say this, that the wages, the earnings, the penalty of our sin is death. It's the death penalty. Sin. We all deserve death. Spiritual death. Spiritually being separated from God for eternity. But praise God, the verse doesn't stop there, okay? I have a certain one that just graduated from kindergarten that, that heard this verse taught in kindergarten this year, and as they were helping the kids memorize this, um, Veronica just gave them that first half for the wages of sin is death. And a certain six-year-old that I know quite well raised his hand, said, Mrs. Glazner, that's not right, the Bible wouldn't say that. And she's like, hold on, hold on. No, 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 the Bible doesn't say the wages of sin is that. She's, Let me tell you the rest of the verse. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Oh, okay. Praise God that doesn't stop with the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Hebrews says that without the shedding of blood, there's no remission, there's no forgiveness of sin. Christ died to pay the, the death, the penalty that we deserved. And provides for us the opportunity to have a relationship with God through Christ, through Him dying on our behalf. So go back to, to John 1.12 for a second. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. To those who believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for their sin, rose again, proving his victory over, over, over sin and death and hell. And the, the resurrection is, is critical, right? Because it's what proves that Jesus is who he said he was. 
Right? Resurrection is critical to that. I mean, Jesus said, I'm going to die, but it's His resurrection that proves that He was more than just a good teacher. It proves that He was God in the flesh because only God has the ability to overcome death and defeat death, which then provides for us the opportunity to have eternal life. Peter writes this, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to His great mercy, He has caused us to be born again to a living hope. How? Through the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. To an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. See, once we believe in Jesus as our Savior, the one who died in our place for our sin, it's, it's like we have the lights turned on for the first time. It's like we, we really grasp it and, and we understand the, the, the reality of coming to Christ is the difference of going from dark to light, from death to life. That's the impact of the Gospel. That's the power of the Gospel. That's the difference of what we have in Christ. And when we believe in Jesus and re- receive Him, right? Believe and receive, like received Him a- as our Savior, accept that incredible gift of salvation that He's offering to us, we have eternal life. John writes this, this is the testimony that God gave us eternal life. And this life is in His Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. I mean, I I don't sugarcoat the gospel. It is life and death. It really is. It's light and dark. And and if you ever talk to somebody who's a, a new follower of Christ, trust me, they can probably express to you the reality of how the lights are turned on for the first time and it's like they can see things in a whole different way. Why? Because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. The good news of Jesus Christ that they believe and receive. For some of you, you, maybe you're hearing this for the first time. Maybe you've heard this many times. But I just want to challenge you with this. Our prayer for you is that you would ask Jesus to be the leader of your life and the forgiver of your sin. Lord and Savior. Ask Him to be the leader of your life, the Lord of your life, and the forgiver of your sin, your Savior today. We would love to talk with you about that. We would love to explain more to you. Maybe as, as you hear this, you, you got some of the pieces together, but you need to have a, another conversation or conversations to continue to understand more and more. We would love to connect with you. We'd love to have you come up and talk with myself or one of the individuals that have been up here or maybe you came with somebody. Chat with them. Or maybe, you know, I'd encourage you just even grab a bulletin, scan that QR code, leave us a message. We will connect with you. Because we have a desire to be followers who make followers. Now, I also want to say this. You can take the gospel, and I think one of the passages that kind of pulls it together so well for us is this passage in Romans chapter 10. Listen to these words. If, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. That's the heart of the gospel message. And if you're not a follower of Christ, we want to encourage you to grab a hold of that. We want to encourage you to to place your faith in Jesus and recognize your need for Him. Don't be one like in Romans chapter 1 who suppresses the truth of the gospel of Christ. Now, let me kind of shift gears a little bit. I want to talk to those of you who are 
followers of Christ. Like if, if we did a raise of hands, we're not going to do this, but if we did a raise of hands, I said, if you're a follower of Christ, truly a follower of Christ, raise your hand. Probably, a lot of hands would probably go up, right? Let me talk to you for a second. You've probably heard me or someone else express and, and present a message very similar to this probably many times. In fact, my guess is some of you could quote maybe all of those verses from Romans, from John 1, 12. You could just probably rattle those off or even just pretty close. You could work through those verses. You, you could talk about them. Let, let me ask you this. Seeing we, we truly have placed our faith in Jesus Christ, we know this is the good news. This is the greatest news ever of Christ coming to, to pay for our sin. Let me ask you this. When's the last time you've shared even a portion of this with someone else who is not a follower of Christ? I mean, really think about that for a second. When's, when's the last time you shared just even a little bit of a verse? Maybe when, when, when's the last time you, you had a conversation and you just threw in just a couple of words that pointed to Christ? When's the last time you really expressed to someone what you are all about because you just can't help but share with people that you're a follower of Jesus Christ. Our purpose as a church is to make passionate followers of Jesus Christ. And that means for those of us who have become a follower of Jesus Christ, we want to be those who make followers of Jesus I want to challenge you. Maybe you say, you know, I, I'm somebody I don't really like saying a whole lot. I just kind of think, listen, become a follower who makes followers. Maybe think about how you could stretch yourself in just a little bit of a way to be a follower who makes followers of Jesus. I mean, maybe it's just intentionality, parents, right within your own home, with your own kids, to help make them passionate followers of Jesus Christ. To help them recognize their need to trust in Christ as their Savior. And to show them and present to them and teach them as you are going, baptizing, teaching, the truths of Scripture. I, I want to challenge you. Become a follower of Jesus who makes followers of Jesus in the workplace. Let the good news of Christ rub off of you and onto others. I, I would encourage you, be that co-worker that is people just know you're going to talk about Jesus at some point and listen you don't have to be obnoxious to do that you can do it in a bold loving caring manner and I want to challenge you don't lose the joy of salvation the passion of being a passionate follower of Jesus Christ See, we need this reminder. We need this reminder time and time again. Because we end up making it about so many other things and really it's about making disciples. Being a follower of Jesus who makes followers of Jesus. A little further on in that passage in Romans chapter 10, it says this, How then will they call on Him in whom they have not believed? How are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. It's wonderful. It's beautiful when someone is willing to share the good news of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. You don't have to do it perfect. Let me, let me just remind you, you're not the one who saves. God's the one who saves. He's not asking you to do that. He's just asking you to be a witness. To tell others about what God has done in your heart and your life. To share with those that you care about the greatest news ever. And pray that God does the work in their heart and life that only God can do. It's not up to you. It's not up to you to save. It's just up to us to share. Well, one of the ways that we have an opportunity to 
become followers who make followers is with the opportunity that we have before us this morning to send out a couple of missions teams. And it, it really comes back to our purpose statement as a church. We exist to make passionate followers of Jesus Christ. And it's, and it's a both and, right? It's about leading people to Christ and helping those who are followers of Christ to grow in their faith. And one of the ways that we're doing that is with some opportunities that we've been presented as a church with. Um, years ago, I think about eight years ago, I'm guessing with a little bit of this, this timeline here, um, we took on some missionaries, Dan and Irena Doyle, and they were missionaries in Nicaragua at the time. And we started supporting them and getting acquainted with them. I've, I've known Dan for uh, like 25 years. And... Um, and just got familiar with their ministry, and they do a phenomenal job of equipping churches and equipping church leaders and coming alongside of them, partnering with them. And uh, they were in Nicaragua and got connected with a the church there, got this church, Spring Life Baptist Church, uh, off their feet and going. They helped them get some, some uh, develop some pastors from right from within their church. And Alex Soto, Alex and his wife Lorena are there. They're a part of this church, been a part of that church for quite a while. And even about five or six years ago, Dan contact, contacted us and said, hey, we've got this young couple, pastor in our church. Um, they need a vehicle. Would you guys consider helping them get a vehicle? And we jumped on that opportunity. Now, years later, they've contacted us, and Dan said, listen, Alex and Lorena and the church there, they've taken some significant steps. Um, he's like, I I'm trying to pull away more and just allow them to continue to grow, but I'd like to partner them with a church in North America. And he said, of all the churches that I have contacts with, he said, listen, you're my first phone call. He said, I've prayed about this. And he said, I just thought I need to call and talk to Ben because I'd really desire to see Central Baptist Church in Yorkshire, New York, be the church that partners with Spring Life Baptist Church in Nicaragua. Wow. What an incredible opportunity. And so we've had months and months and months of conversations with uh, our missionary Dan Doyle, with Alex Soto, and, and uh, technology affords us the opportunity to connect quite a lot and to be able to talk with them. We've talked about this as a church and uh, have, have had a lot of conversations about this and finally came to the place where Dan said, listen, here's what you need to do. Just send a, send a small team. Send a small team to come down to take a look at the ministry. We have some, some ways that they can serve. They're going to be serving Paul's going to be doing some teaching. They're going to be doing some painting and some, some help around the, the church and some projects that they have there. But send a small team to come down and check this out and see what this partnership could potentially look like. And we talked about it at church and said, two thumbs up, we want to go for it, right? And so we're all behind it. And so I want to ask that team, Paul Williams is going to be heading that team up, and Mark Warrens is going to be on that team, Barb and um, Rachel... Yeah, Barb's bringing, she's coming, she's, Barb's bringing the whole teen Sunday school class in, I love this. Thank you, ladies, for, for bringing them in, um, so that they could come and see this and be a part of this. Um, you guys can all sit right down in this front row, teens, and, and I'm going to ask you guys, if you can squeeze in a little bit more this time, that'd be good. But Mark's going to come, and Rachel's coming as well, and, um. We're sending these four down to, to Nicaragua. They're going to be leaving this Tuesday. And they're going to be gone for a week. They're going to come back the following Tuesday. I want to ask you to be in prayer for them. Not just now. I, I, I would challenge you, I'm going to challenge you to, to commit to pray for them each and every day. Start today and just pray for them for this trip and this opportunity as they just seek to be a blessing to that church down there. And I want to tell you, I'm sure God's going to work in their lives as well in an incredible way. We also have another opportunity that was presented to us in January. I got a call from uh, the director of the school where our daughter Madison has been at in Albania. And he said, Ben, he said, you know we're trying to get this school uh, launched in Kenya. And we're looking for teachers. Every week they have a teacher from uh, Kenya and, and a teacher from somewhere else around the globe come and teach um, college-age students uh, about really abiding and about really being in Christ. And, and he said, hey, would you be willing to come and teach for one week of this one-month school 
uh, session that they have. And I was like, man, this, this sounds pretty neat. Let me have some conversations with our church and leaders and talk about it. I'll get back to you. And uh, got back to them and said, yeah, I, you know, it's going to work out for me to come and teach. I said, listen, what about me bringing some people with you or with, with me to, to the school the week I'm there? And they said, absolutely. Green light, gave me the green light, bring some people with you. So I want the, that Kenya crew to come down front here. Uh, my wife, Candace, is going to be coming, and I'll try to say their names in order here as they're coming up. Daly, uh, Nuremberger, Cole Hewitt, Elizabeth Rieger, Emma Barkley, my wife Candace, and our son Caleb. And our daughter Emma is already there. Inter interest, Maddie. Sorry, Emma's basically our second daughter too. For those of you who know her. Pretty much, pretty much. We kind of have half adopted her. Uh, but C Greg pointed out to me, Greg Rieger, um, in between services, kind of interesting. His oldest daughter is on one team and his youngest daughter is on the other team. Just exciting, just how it all worked out. But what, what I'd like to do is just, uh, just ask you to, to be in prayer for these, and I'm going to have a couple guys. Um, Les is going to come and, and Tanner's going to come, and I'm going to have them pray for these teams. But be in prayer for them. They have the opportunity to come, and they're going to be students. They're going to jump right in with the school. They're going to be students. And they loved 1 John so much, they said, we want to hear it a second time. And uh, so they're going to be sitting in on those classes. But as well, they're going to be serving in the community. There's going to be some opportunities presented to them where they will be serving, whether it's to uh, kids who live on the streets and have nothing um, and taking meals or in orphanages or in other ministries locally, they are going to be serving in some of those opportunities as well. And they're going to be going, 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 going the entire time they're there. We are going to be leaving, most of us are leaving uh, Thursday, no, Friday technically, 1 a.m. Um, from, from, uh, from here. And, and we'll be flying uh, to, to, uh, to Kenya. And then a couple are going to be a couple days behind. And we're going to be there about 10 days for the most part. Some of them are staying a little bit longer. But uh, you can be in prayer for our group. And then here's, here's kind of how this is all going to pull together, okay? When we all come back, when we're all back, the first Sunday that we're back is the 23rd. We are blessed to have our missionary Tim Watley with us that Sunday. You will not want to miss that. It's always a blessing to hear what Tim is up to. They have been a part of a huge project in Indonesia where they just got a copy of the Word of God, New Testament, um, to the Moy people there. I'm sure he's going to tell us about that. Amazing story. And then as well, on the 30th, the following Sunday, these, some individuals from these teams are going to share about uh, the trips that, that we've had with you. And uh, the neat part is this, that's the same day as our picnic. So you're going to be able to hear a little bit from them, and then as we have the picnic that afternoon, I want to challenge you, talk with them, interact with them, ask them questions about the trips. But I would like these guys to pray um, for, for our teams, and Tanner's going to pray for the Nicaragua team, and, uh, and then Les will pray for the for the Kenya crew here. So. We're gonna have one more person pray, but Barb wanted to say something. Yeah, go, go ahead, Barb. So when you're faced with an opportunity like this, you look back in your life and you look at God's providence. And this church truly exists to make passionate followers of Jesus Christ. These teens that have come down with me as I've gone through God's providence, I've watched grow up. And Emily has decided that she was going to be courageous enough to pray for me on, on my trip. So come on up, Emily. I'm just as nervous as you are. <laughs> Go ahead, Emily. Thank you for this day, and thank you that all these people are able to go and still think about lots in their faith and just helping them have that trip. Amen. Thanks, Emily. All right, Father, we come before you, and we're so thankful, Lord, for who you are. We're so thankful for this time that we have to celebrate what you are doing. Lord, I'm thankful for each and every one of the individuals on both of these teams who have stepped forward to say yes to where you are leading them, at least over the next week or so. Lord, we're thankful for this time to, to celebrate all that you're doing and recognize that we get to join in with it. Lord, I pray that you would be with these teams, particularly with, with this, this group going to Nicaragua, Lord, that you would protect them from, 
from the lies, the traps, the snares of the enemy who seeks to kill and steal and destroy, Lord, that you would just lead and guide and that you would give wisdom and great strength and grace where it is needed. Lord, we look forward to celebrating with them the, the, with the reports that they bring back. Lord, we pray that this trip would be uh, fruitful, uh, profitable, Lord, that they would be an encouragement to the church and that that church would in turn be an encouragement with them. And Lord, we just pray that you would do great things, that you would make passionate followers of Jesus Christ in the, in the areas that they are going to. Lord, bless the trip. Use them as lights, ambassadors, encouragers for your name, for your honor, for your glory. And we ask all this in Christ's name. Amen. Jesus, you are Lord, and you have been given all authority on heaven and earth. And because of this, we are excited as a church to, to, to be obedient in the Great Commission and send these two groups out, Lord. Uh, we are excited. We pray, Lord, that you bless this trip. We pray that you would give them uh, safety as they travel uh, far off, Lord. Just be with them. Um, we do pray for Pastor Ben as he prepares and organizes uh, these messages, Lord. We pray that you would use him and use your word uh, to impact hearts and lives, to challenge and to spur on, and to just see growth in all those uh, who hear it. We pray for the others as they, as they learn and grow as well, and as they reach out to a community in need, that you would just be a blessing, that they would know that we are Christians by our love, Lord. We pray, uh, Lord, for their safety as they return, and we look forward to hearing all that you are doing, uh, and we are excited as a church, and we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate that. I want to I encourage you to connect with them, rub shoulders with them, ask them about uh, more details of the trip. I had a lot of people asking a lot of questions in between services. Just want to challenge you to do that as well. This is, this is a fantastic opportunity for us, and uh, I want to just really challenge you to be in prayer for each of these teams. And, you know, this, this is a great opportunity for growth for each of them, each and every individual. You know, I, I think of of these college age students here they're going to be going on this um you know what for the most part the church is losing that age group this is a great opportunity for god to do a great work in their lives and to really spark both teams both all those individuals so that they look back um, years down the road and recognize how god used this trip to encourage them in a great way and then at the same time uses them to make a difference in the locations they're going you know, that's what it's all about for us. We want to be a church who makes followers of Jesus, right? We want to be those who, who are truly de desiring to grow in our lives and our relationship with the Lord. We want to, to leave a gospel impact wherever we go, and, and we want to point people to the Savior. So I just want to encourage you, be in prayer for these teams. Let them know. Go up to one of them and say, hey, I'm going to be praying for you. I'm going to pray for you every day on this trip. I want to challenge you to do that and to be in prayer for this. Well, to close our service, we're going to have the opportunity to praise God together. So I'm going to ask the praise team to come. We're going to sing one song together and then close our time. So would you stand with us and let's praise the name of the Lord our God together. <laughs> 